let's face it, the first thing that pops into our head when we hear the word pottery is a Disney movie Hercules. But what is pottery? And what do these pattern designs mean? Since we moved away from classic Greek pottery or vase painting, I wonder what pottery is really like today. Abby Preston is an ambitious young ceramic artist. Her pieces have a beautiful minimalistic approach, but with an arresting elegance which is hard to describe. As she ramps up her production line for the fall, we drop by to find out what keeps her going and what keeps her motivated as an artist. Young Hustlers on the Rise begins now. I'm from Georgia. I grew up about an hour in northeast of Atlanta and I moved to Houston about six or seven years ago. I came to only stay for a year um, working with a nonprofit and then ended up staying a lot longer. Uh, my family, for sure. They're still all there and so I miss them a lot. We're really, really close. Um, but I also just miss the landscape and the feel of Georgia. Um, I just have fond memories of growing up and staying out till the sun went down in summertime and so just sweet memories from that. I started Box Studio in 2013. Um, I had gone to school for ceramics and then after I moved to Houston I decided that Clay was the right medium for me and I was working full-time management in retail and kind of just needed something else and so I found a studio with my studio mate and um, the past I guess three to four years we've just kind of been on the grind um, working and building up our brands and um, as of next month I will have been self-employed doing this um, full-time for two years. had a great professor because I actually hated my first ceramics class. I um, wasn't a fan of throwing on the wheel and so I actually did more sculptural pieces. And so my professor was great because he opened up like a whole new perspective of what clay was and so that's what helped me to really fall in love with the medium. And then I was an apprentice for another studio potter and he showed me a lot of just like the behind the scenes and how to run a business. and. So that was really influential in my journey. I was a studio um, resident artist and I was teaching on the wheel. And so I had been kind of like playing around with it and then I really had to learn fast because I was starting to teach. And so that was really the only thing available at that studio. I couldn't really do my sculptural pieces so I had to transition to the wheel. And that I just kind of fell in love with the possibilities and just making functional pieces. Most of my pieces are thrown on the wheel and the reason I choose to throw on the wheel is um, you can make really symmetrical pieces pretty quickly and so a lot of potters I mean since the beginning of the craft have been working on the wheel and it even goes back to kick wheels and so it's the idea of throwing something on this revolving spinning wheel and being able to make something symmetrical and quickly and so um, yeah that's sort of just what I've kind of leaned into, and I know several other ceramic artists who also use the wheel as their main tool to create. The medium itself is not super forgiving. Um, it takes, you know, anywhere from two to four weeks to actually make a piece. And granted, I'm making several pieces at once, but um, it's a lot of chemistry involved. And so you really have to like focus and it causes you to slow down and really take your time, which is one thing I love about the medium. But you can also create this beautiful piece and it goes through three different firings and you open the kiln and there's like a big crack in there. And so sometimes it can be very unforgiving. And so I think when I do slow down and I do take my time and really focus in on the details, then that's when it's most successful. Depending on what you're making, 
you can throw something really small where you're using two pounds or something larger where you're doing 10 pounds and so the more clay you use the more difficult it is to kind of move around on the wheel and if you're making something very large and something that has a very small neck or like a bottle that can be a more challenging form it just it depends on what you're making that kind of makes it a little bit easier a little more difficult so whenever you go to something really big and then try to move that clay back into something very narrow that's more of a challenging form I actually make all of my glazes and so I've had to study um, what glazes work really well with the clay bodies that I use and that just takes time and testing and a little bit of knowledge of glaze chemistry and so there's um, a little bit of that too. I actually use a white base that I've developed and just researched and have been able to get it really stable onto the clay bodies that I use. And I add what we call colorants or oxides into the glazes to create these different colors. And they go in at different percentages and so you're able to add them in. And it takes several weeks because you, you know, do at 1% of a color, see what it comes out to be, and then you add another 2 or 3%. And so you just kind of have to see what happens and how it turns out and if you find it one that's really successful then you kind of like hold on to it and you're like okay this is part of my glazes that I'm going to keep using. I grew up in Georgia and my family is really close and so I draw a lot of inspiration from the table. Um, we grew up eating meals together. My family, my parents were really firm on the tradition of turning off the TV, coming together as a family, sitting down and sharing a meal and so it had me begin thinking about the process of what we're eating off of and um, making handmade pieces and the hope is that they become kind of these generational like pieces where heirlooms that are passed down and um, they can stay within the family and that inspires me when people come together in the home or around the table and the conversations that are had because that occurs in many different and beautiful ways and then the other thing is I just had a conversation with someone yesterday about the idea of when you are making a piece a handmade piece you're through that action kind of um, pushing against mass production and so the idea of creating these handmade pieces that are one of a kind and kind of um, moving in that direction that is inspiring for me too. And that's how I like to look at my work. I um, specifically and intentionally hand sign the bottom of every piece. I don't stamp it, I hand sign one because yeah it's a functional piece of work but it's also this handcrafted piece of artwork that hopefully my clients are taking home and they see it as something that is original and handmade and signed by the artist. But I have two that are really special to me. One is called um, the Papu Collection, which is based off of my grandfather. And uh, he was just this big guy. He was a chef. Um, he, I remember he had these like huge hands and he loved his wine and he loved to sing. And um, I have fond memories of us being in the kitchen with him and uh, creating meals together and his famous mashed potatoes and cutting up rosemary for his bread that he was making and so whenever he was there in the house he would just people were drawn to him and so the collection based off of him is for hosting or um, those who love to bring people into their homes and so they're large pitchers large bowls serving platters and so that collection is based on him and then the second collection is based on my grandmother, Betty, and she was not particularly one to love cooking, but she cooked because she loved her family, and she loved it when they were all together, and I believe my love of coffee came from her. I remember waking up, spending the night at her house, and she always had her coffee in hand, and so her collection is for the everyday. There's pieces that you use on a daily basis and that mug that's your favorite, it fits your hand just right. Um, that collection is based on her and um, just my memories from being with her. Consistency I think is the biggest thing uh, showing up every day um, and consistency within uh, my pieces, uh, social media, branding, just that showing up and I heard this artist one time say like 
uh, just come to the studio, even if it means picking up a broom and sweeping your floor, you're there, you're in the space, and so creativity can begin to thrive. And so I love that because I remember when we first got our studio, I felt so lost because I was in this space, but I hadn't really found my um, aesthetic, I guess, and so I was really struggling to know what to create, and so some days I would come in, I would sit at my desk, and I would just be in this space, but it was the consistency of showing up for myself every day. And then I think the second thing is just making quality work. Um, a mentor of mine once told me, if you can't put your name to it and be proud, you shouldn't put it out there, and so um, that's one thing that I feel like my work is set apart because of the intentionality and the focus and trying to make really honest work. Ooh, failure is hard. Um, I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist, so it's really difficult for me to um, kind of work through those like the aftermath of a failure. And so I think what I try to put into practice is to just take a step back and kind of observe what happened and just take note from that and be able to um, learn what happened or what went wrong. And then I think the biggest thing for me is to really show myself some grace and to be gentle with myself and to know that in the past, most of the time when these failures have happened, I've learned the most and to be able just to be brave and continue moving forward and know that it's probably going to happen again. But if I can continue just to be gentle with myself and just know that, you know, there's, there's room to grow and it, it'll happen. So it's inevitable. My definition of success would be to be excited about the work that I'm creating and to continue to be inspired by that and to know that what I'm creating um, is worthwhile and that people are able to respond to that. Show up for yourself. Um, like I was saying earlier, that consistency of showing up for yourself and being in the space and being consistent. The other thing I would say is uh, find a community of people that are like-minded and that can help you in those patches where you feel really uninspired and you feel overwhelmed. Because one of the hardest things is when you're creating but also turning it into a business, you have to really wear a lot of hats. And so if you can find a group of people who support and know the process of what you're going through, um, that's been irreplaceable for me to have that community.